Stop. <laughs> that was so much fun. I felt like we were in a boy band. We, we all are we we almost are boy. So, so the reason we just stop is like. In the night. Yeah, no. Don't buy a dreadnought. Don't do it. Until you finish watching this video, maybe. <laughs> that's um that's what we want to talk about because you know as we were growing up, you know you are what 22 and I yeah. am yeah. 87 years old. As we were growing up, like the only acoustic guitar you could get was a dreadnought, pretty a much. Big honking. Or thing. a Yamaha nylon string. That those was, those were, were plentiful as well. That was yes. pretty much like I have one sitting over there with a broken string on that I got at a garage sale for I think forty or sixty dollars. I think it was forty um, when I was a teen, young teenager, maybe. There it was go. like my first like real classical. Um, but anyway, like dreadnought was all there was, and they were not good at the price level that we would get. They were bad at like twenty dollars. <laughs> yeah, it was like <laughs> yeah, the no. actions like this. But no, like the, the so the reason like we're doing this video is because like you, all the new guitar players out there that are going in there buy a guitar. They're used to sort of seeing that maybe, or you might be pushed that by the sales force. Because sure. that's maybe what they have. Like, there's so many other guitars that are probably better for you. Let's first start with number one, size. It's probably too big for you. It's a honking big guitar, you know? I mean, I see all the time, like, younger kids. <laughs> kids. Or, 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 or maybe, you know, like, slight-framed uh, girls. Oh. <laughs> and they're like, well, also, uh, also, or Baxter. <laughs> You know, and they pick up a dreadnought, and they're like, I, I just don't know. And, you know, before I know it, they're they're laying it down their lap. And I'm playing it and Dobro style. Things. That's right. Um, yeah, it's just not not a good fit, you know? No, like, and the, the size is, it's just, it's so, if you cannot get comfortable with a guitar, you shouldn't be playing the guitar. It's true. Like you, you're not, you're not going to be able to play it. You're gonna, it's going to be harder to play. It's not going to be as joyous. You're not going to get as good as a new guitar player. We'll get into the joys of dreadnoughts in a minute. But size can be a huge thing. Jumbos are the same thing. Like, don't get a J200 as your first guitar as a 12-year-old. And, and I love big guitars, and I love jumbos, but I'm a larger framed person. Um, you're, you're not a svelte, no, small little I'm not. school gal. Um, um, I no, have a nice no, little gut to mount. You don't have a gut. You, know? you got muscles, baby. It's That's like, right. It's like They're gut-shaped muscles. Like, yes. Yeah, That's true. <laughs> <laughs> called the keg. It's really strange. I don't know why God made me this way. I, um, I think you're quite pretty. But, um, but no, it's um, yeah. no, it's, it's the size can be like a huge issue, and it's just like just, just check it out. Like that's you don't have to have it. Also, the um, it's, it's it might not be the tone you want. It, it might not be. You know, like we can get. In, I love dreadnoughts in a lot of ways. We'll get into that too. too. But you might just be getting like a big basic dreadnought. It's just it can be like just a big loud booming thing. If you want to pay finger picking, I was gonna say if you're a dainty little player, yeah, you're probably not gonna move that top enough to get the intended tonal qualities that you're going for. That they get the guitars built for, or that you hear in your head, you know. No, it's um, it's it, the the um the nut width might be an issue as well. Like a lot of these are one eleven sixteenth nuts still, and it's really small yeah. for like a larger sized hand. True. Even if you have a you know, even if you think your body's like, it's just it's awkward. So like going back to the size thing, you can't sit on the couch with a dreadnought very easily. You gotta sort of sit in a chair without arms, maybe a bench. You know, you can't, you really can't. You, can't. you sit on the couch, like if you're a, you're a bigger cap, you're a little, like it's over. It's still it's like, not comfortable, right? Like if I sit on the couch with a dreadnought, I mean, I still, it's, it's slightly awkward. What do know? I sit on the couch with? A GS Mini, 100% of the time. Yeah. Taylor GS Mini, that's just, I, li I live with one. It's like, it's like an extra pair of socks. I just like to always have an extra pair of socks in my backpack. That's true. Doesn't make sense, does it? But um, no, it's um, it, yeah. So back to the nut width, one and three quarter is a little more standard now, in that type of size. So for a lot of folks, they like that if they're getting a more full size. The most comfortable is going to be more of a triple lot or double lot size. That's gonna it's gonna be a little bit thinner, not quite as big of a butt and bout. Or the good old Grand Auditorium from the Taylor. You oh the Taylor family. Okay, so yeah, the Taylor family that they sort of. They they hit the engineering perfection as far as size goes. You know, you have it right there. It it fits right there in your lap. You can sit on the couch. You can play it. It's comfortable. It does its thing. You don't have to hit it too hard to vibrate that top. Right. It's true. They've actually got their sort of jumbo sizes will vibrate the tops really darn well. I don't with know the how they do out. that honestly. It's a I mean, this was not supposed to be like a Taylor Love video, but no. it is pretty impressive that they're huge guitars. And I own a lot of Martins, yeah. dreadnoughts included. I have multiple. Yeah, Martin no, I, I love. I, I I don't own a lot of them, but I love them. He plays them. I play them when he comes in here. He's true. Yeah, he can't afford them. <sighs> just a, I steal them. I have too many. 
I've, you have too many other electric yeah, habits. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> like your magnetone wall. One day. <laughs> That's a few Martins right there. What? <laughs> you know, you could have that yeah. joy of that beautiful acoustic ring. <laughs> No, and we say Martin a lot because, like, when I think dreadnought, I think Martin. Me too. You know, it's just like it's you know everybody makes a dreadnought, but Martin is the dreadnought maker, and it's just it's you know, it, and you got you got to like know what you're looking for within the dreadnought too, like your education basis. Like, let's say you are like a new guitar player, or or moderate guitar player, and you're like, I want that dreadnought. Like, you don't know if you want an 18 series, a 28 series. You know, do you want the rosewood sound? Do you want that? A good yeah. old mahogany ear. Yeah, you know. yeah, what are you looking for? You're looking for the 15 series, like solid mahogany, which I do love. It's one of my favorites. And for affordability, bing. Yeah. One of the best bangs for your buck out there. Um, got the triple lot, one with the slotted headstock. Oh, good Lord. Love it. It's expensive. I just love the triple lot size. I mean, I just think that it's just an amazing guitar. It frames you well. It frames me well. It does. It. So it counters like the Skinner look that you come with naturally. Makes you more hipster. It gives you that Neil Young vibe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he played a D45. A D41. No, I, mean, I know. I know. I just, I just wanted to say that joke because I'm enjoying it. He's been in the news a lot lately, so it's fun. It's, it's fun to say this stuff. Um, so, why would you get a dreadnought? Do you like bluegrass music? <laughs> Maybe you're a bluegrasser. <laughs> kind of have to get one then. I feel like that's sort of like a no brainer. Maybe you're going to war with the banjo. Thank you. Volume. If you are playing acoustically with other musicians, the dreadnought's kind of the way to go. That's um, now you're gonna have to probably stand up or play in the bench, but you're doing that a lot. I, I like to, I sit in benches like what we're sitting in right now when I play this quite a bit. Comfortable way to play a dreadnought. Did you teach me that? That's where the dreadnought name came from. F well, it came from the battleship. Yeah, going to war with the banjo. I think yeah, that's amazing. Well, yeah, it was just yeah. I mean, I don't think I taught you that. I just think it was just named after the dreadnoughts of you yeah. Know, World I just War can't remember if I heard that first from you. I, or I don't think I said that. Stuff. I like that though. Going to war with the banjo. That's fun. I don't know who I heard that phrase from, but it always is stuck in my brain. But it is one of the only ways to compete with a banjo. Yeah. Because banjos are loud, and they have a sound that you want to be able to compete with to make the audience happy sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and and you know, I think what happens a lot of times if you're in that world. That is like the only guitar that exists, right? I mean, not really, but it is. No, you see the you, you know? see some like the real cats like playing the old timey music too. Like they're playing like the triple lot shapes, and it yeah. sounds awesome. It looks great in the mix. It's just that's more old timey, not bluegrass. Not bluegrass. That's what I'm seeing. I have a friend who, if you're ever in Hamlet, North Carolina, and you go to the hardware store, Ooh. you will see him. He is fantastic. He's a fantastic guitar player and a bluegrass player. Um, but he came out to see me one time, and I'm playing my Taylor because that's what I have. And he posted a video, and one of his bluegrass friends was like, but, but, he's playing a Taylor. <laughs> and it was just this whole comment thread that I found really fun. And I was like, well, you know, I was really would love to have Martin one day. We, we, but, so um, we, we do sell guitars at Merle Fest, uh, which is coming up in April, yeah. at the end of April, every last week of April, every year. We were there earlier, because anyway, but we sell guitars, and we're selling the Taylor guitars there. Yes. And then there's like, there's usually a Martin booth, and that's sold by one of the local music shops up there. I can't remember her name. Jackson. Right? Jackson Music. Jackson Music. I think they're based out of Winston or something. Somewhere but Yeah, there. but, um, yeah, but they shoot a couple shops. And, but they, but it's funny because like we sell a ton of tailors. At that we do. Event, and you would not yeah. think so at a bluegrass festival. No, no. You know, Doc Watson, Merle Travis type of things. But people, like it's, it, it does work in that setting. I know it's sacrilege to say. That's crazy, I know. And, and the, the, my favorite part was we were there like, and we heard somebody say, like, they were walking by, it's like, oh, look at the tailor booth. And this, this bluegrass guy goes, I would never... <laughs> I think an overall, it would, could not have been more perfect. I was like, I, I, I would give anything to, him. We were like, to have that on video. Because there was, yeah. like, we don't work for Taylor. <laughs> we think so that's offended. hilarious. No, we do think that's hilarious. Our Taylor rep was, um, he, was, he didn't hear it, but he would have been like, no, no, you, try this. It's <laughs> the B class just, bracing thing. I don't. I was dying. It was amazing. X bracing or death. Yeah. It was like, you know, it's like, it's, it was, it was great. I it, would never. I would never. Yeah, it's it's just, like, yeah, I can't. Yeah, it was, put, everything he about it was amazing. He, he all but spit. Yes, the rock. I loved it. It was <laughs> no. Was so fantastic. yeah, or if you're if you're playing, you know, obviously with any other musicians that you want to compete with, or like vocally, I think dreadnoughts do really fit nice with singing. It's true. And I do love. I think when you see like um, certain female singer songwriters with the dreadnought, 
it does some magical things with their voices sometimes. Well, because you get to a point when we started the video, we talked about beginning. Just because beginning, it may not be right. Like, like feel is so important when you're starting to play. Because if you can't get comfortable, like Baxter said, you're probably going to quit. If you're like, I can this, I can never hold this, my hands are too small, blah, 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 you're probably going to quit. But when you reach the level where you can play and then you want to find the tool that fits the thing you're doing, sometimes a dreadnought is the perfect thing to yes. for that. And not necessarily just bluegrass. Like a singer-songwriter, nice, you know, rosewood back, spruce top. And sometimes for recording, yeah. too, like I use this, my 65 Hummingbird is one of the best recording guitars I have. You know, it's a mahogany build. It's flat response. It just sounds great. It fits in the mix perfectly with other instruments, too. It, and it doesn't, it's not like banging around too many overtones like some of the guitars that I personally love to play the most. Like, you know, the, the small body loud sizes. Right. Very overtone rich. Or even some of the triple out Martins. But not awesome always for, for recording. Our, our buddy Danish Pete across the pond not too long ago bought a D18 because he said when he goes to record new sessions, he was always borrowing one because that was the, you know, that recorded the I best. feel like Danish Pete shouldn't be allowed to buy our American Martins. I, just, I mean, you know, that's a whole different, you know. I just, I just don't feel it's a different right. video. It's I, a whole we should, um, different video. If you, if you agree with us, like you know, just reach out to Andertons. Tanglewoods only for Danish Pete. Is that what yeah, you're like he's got to play British dreadnoughts or something. Ouch. He's, he's, yeah, just um, Tanglewoods it is. <laughs> Handcrafted in China. But um, I'm not dissing him. I just think it's funny because I remember this one shop that we used to work with, and he's like, "I only carry Tanglewoods. They're all, they're all built in England." And I'm Good like, "Old UK guitars. They're not built in England." They're owned it it's like saying i'm from i was born in california but i'm not californian you know maybe i am maybe that does make you california maybe it does. does it got that know. got that birth certificate i mean you look like you should just you know you just popped in from surfing hang 10 <laughs> i just did this hang 10 i just picture you out like skating <laughs> I mean, on the boardwalk you know oh i do like skating. going down to venice beach it's fun like when you when you're when you're in la i always like going down there and seeing like the skaters and it's just such a funny and then like the People like spitting at you and stuff. It's, it's pretty, awesome. It's not clean and nice at all anymore. But tense. It tense. never was clean and nice. It's just how it's always been. That's, That's true. Anyway, yeah, so there, there's awesome places. Once you get to a certain level, Dreadnought's great. I don't think it's the best starting guitar unless you live in a gospel or bluegrass family. And you're 6'8". eight. <laughs> you're a monster. <laughs> <laughs> you're just a complete... Like if Shaq. If Shaq was going to start, he could have a Dreadnought. Is Jay-Z tall? I feel like he is. I'm just thinking about like, just when he was doing like that Wonderwall thing at the 2008 Glastonbury. Yeah, the Strat looked, looked normal to smallish on him. So that, was his, his, that was him, Pumpkin Knoll. <laughs> it's like, which, which is pretty funny, actually. I love that. Those two have since mended bridges, I'm yeah. sure. Like, but it doesn't. I thought it was hilarious. It's great for the, pretty funny. Uh, it was great for the whole music industry when they had that feud. Loved it. But um, yeah. So like, let us know your thoughts on Dreadnoughts. We actually personally love them. So. It's, um, that was a little, little trick there, obviously, but it's, it's not a great guitar to start with for most cats. Don't, don't get the big dreadnought as your first guitar. We all start with it, and you struggle and struggle and struggle. We now have guitars built for the size of young beginners. It's true. And even older beginners that want a comfortable, easy playing experience. And when you buy your dreadnought, make sure you get that cutaway so you can play your acoustic version of Sweet Child You, you take that word back right now. <laughs> Stab you in the guts. <laughs> what do you dreadnoughts mean? don't belong with cutaways. How you gonna how you gonna rip on your on your I'm just saying. I don't know, man. I was gonna say some other reference. I gotta let it go. Just take me home, John. Take me home. <laughs> right. take me home. Hit like and subscribe so you don't miss these riveting conversations. Click the bell. Also, watch or listen, I suppose, to our podcast if you are so inclined. We shall see you next time.